Geeks or Geeks has a challenge for you. The 390 challenge. Choose what you want to learn in 2024 and aim to complete at least 90% of the course in the next 90 days. And if you do that, you get back 90% of what you paid for the course. We believe you can do that. Now all you got to do is commit to your success, commit with Geeks for Geeks. Geeks for Geeks has a challenge for you. The 390 challenge. Choose what you want to learn in 2024 and aim to complete at least 90% of the course in the next 90 days. And if you do that, you get back 90% of what you paid for the course. We believe you can do that. Now all you got to do is commit to your success, commit with Geeks for Geeks. Geeks for Geeks has a challenge for you. The 390 challenge. Choose what you want to learn in 2024 and aim to complete at least 90% of the course in the next 90 days. And if you do that, you get back 90% of what you paid for the course. We believe you can do that. Now all you got to do is commit to your success, commit with Geeks for Geeks. Hi and welcome to Geeks for Geeks. Today, me and Yash Tivedi is here to discuss on how much maths is needed for programming. So before we move forward, let's just introduce ourselves. So yes, yes, the very. Uh, so hi everyone, uh, and hi Siddharth as well. Uh, Happy New Year to everyone. Okay, this is our first stream on the main channel this year. So my name is Yash Tivedi. I'm currently working as a SD at Geeks for Geeks. Besides this, I'm also a DSA and competitive uh, competitive programming mentor at Geeks for Geeks. I'm a candidate master on Code Forces, five star on Code Chef. Uh, you can introduce yourself as well, Siddharth. Yep. So, hi, I'm Sadat Hazra. Currently, I'm an SD at Geeks for Geeks. Besides that, I'm also a candidate master and a six star on Code Chef as well as on uh, Code Forces. So, by the way, as you're told, just to add a bit of salt to this, this is our first stream together in person together. So, yeah. we have been a friends for a long time. Like, we are friends for till like back in three years where we met at Geeks for Geeks. Now, we share very common traits and we have the same ideas too. So let's just not get into this. We would talk about this. This would be a casual discussion kind of thing. So let's move forward. So how much maths is needed for programming? This is our agenda Topic of today. For today. Uh, but before that, uh, Siddharth, I would like to request uh, everyone to give a thumbs up to this video and give a plus one in the chat as well. If everything is working fine. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that needs to be done. So can I have a quick yes or no? How many of you are present on the stream itself? And if, if you just want to push up the live itself, just like this video too. So just check on your end, yes. Yeah, I'll just check. Uh, but others can uh, keep on commenting as well, okay? Yep. So, yep. So today, this would be divided into some segments that the people like let's talk about me i don't belong from iits and it's or triple it's so i had a confusion when i started off with something known as dsa and then competitive programming what happened to me was i didn't really was confident that i would be able to ace up or take up the interview or not because everyone tells me that people who are good with mathematics they are good with dsa as well as competitive programming but no one really does define how much is needed? Like till what extent? Not just what extent. Till what are the topics too that needs to be focused? Because the syllabus of maths needed for interview and for competitive programming, both are kind of different. And I can say the maths needed in DSA is a subset of maths needed in competitive programming. Do you agree? Uh, yes, I agree. But uh, first of all, uh, uh, the very first thing that uh, I would like to say, uh, since you said that uh, it's a subset, so one of the examples would be permutations, combinations, right? This is very basic mathematics that we are taught in class 10th and 11th, 12th as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, co permutation combination is something uh, that is combinatorics that we call it as number theory in uh, uh, competitive programming as well as DSA. So I guess uh, it is used a lot. Uh, so that is one of the uh, straightforward topics that uh, that belongs to mathematics as well as uh, your DSA and CP, right? But uh, before that, uh, you will agree with, uh, with me on the same as well, Siddharth. 
that uh, when it comes to mathematics so the very first starting point whenever you are starting with dsa so before starting with dsa you have to analyze the time and space complexity of algorithm or your normal code snippets like loop for loops while loops and others so whenever you have to analyze the time complexity uh, complexity then also mathematic uh, mathematics is involved basic mathematics like you should know what is log n what is n log n what is under root of n what is cube root of n and things like that so yeah you can elaborate on that siddharth so i think we are done with the let's not make the audience frightened yeah let's just start from the very basic okay before starting off with programming or dsa or cp how much is needed let's just stick to your plan so what i think is you can add the rest what i think is that bit representation what is decimal representation what is binary representation and basic mathematics like powers of 2 left shift right shift and or zor not and simple mathematics which you would be know uh, one more thing like uh, as you said simple mathematics so i'll say uh, some of first n natural numbers right Good. some of uh, squares of first n natural numbers some of uh, cube of first n natural numbers right yeah so n into n plus 1 by 2 n into n plus 1 into 2 n plus 1 by uh, 6 i guess then n uh, into n plus 1 by uh, 2 to uh, the power 2 so all these things are required so these are some of the basics some of the basics yeah and then i can start off with programming yeah okay so now i started off what is the first mathematical point i would be hitting on uh, just what according to you is uh like what was the first algorithm that you came across and it involves in mathematics uh, i would say i i didn't came across any algorithm firstly uh, basically if you will talk about program programming in dsa so firstly i came across prime numbers right check hmm. if a number is prime or not hmm. so the uh, check if a number is a composite number or not okay or playing with some digits of a number and doing something along with it so these are the kind of problems that i came across check if a number is perfect number or not so uh, something related to divisors factors so basically prime numbers right uh, things re- revolving around prime numbers that is what i came across so i would say that uh, prime numbers is a very big category it it holds a large chunk of problems that are there uh, which are asked in interviews of even google kind of companies as well okay so what i did was when i started off mine was a little bit different i didn't came into number theory directly i started off with something known as arrays okay then when i had arrays the very first algorithm i learned was cadence algorithm there the knowledge of addition in arrays yeah was needed and then i moved forward to something known as prefix sum which revolves around the idea of sum till this point like the just knowledge of addition subtraction and multiplication was enough till this point okay and till this point it was okay what was the next you came across uh, what's the next thing that i came across so i will say uh, after this you have to uh, definitely learn gcd right because gcd is another interesting topic that is uh, that comes directly from mathematics so when you learn about uh, you everyone must be knowing the long uh, division method right mm-hmm. where uh, you have a number a and b and then you have to do a long division method so basically greatest common uh, divisor or hcf i think it's getting very distracting let's just answer him okay i think i sh- we should answer him okay so let's just read out the comments loud so that word instructor ever has no experience in teaching and learning in mathematics and dsa fair enough and then yash devedi okay fair enough okay fair enough so it's better so yes you can call out as anything you want because of the freedom of speech that you have in india but the problem is you need to be on the same page to judge so i would urge to come with your real account or a legit account and if you are kind of of the like above or of the same level or if you are on the same page like you have been in the teaching industry for more than 3 years or around 3 years then we can consider but else we would just ignore but not block you so that you can speak to your heart and it can be read by public that's absolutely welcome but a positive criticism is necessary not 
uh, online harassment. What you are doing is an online harassment, not a positive criticism or something else. Okay, let's just move forward. So the very next thing which I came across was the difference between the linear and the binary search. Uh, yes, obviously, when it comes to uh, binary search, right? So first of all, you have n numbers. Then uh, after that, the search space becomes n by 2. Right. Then it becomes n by 4. So when you keep on dividing by 2, uh, then after that, you will get uh, 1 at the end. So then you have to, how do you get the time complexity of binary search? That also is mathematical in nature. Right. So all those things are based on, uh, like, I guess, mathematics. Also, one more thing, uh, when it when it comes to fast exponentiation, right, uh, there is one thing that is known as fast exponentiation uh, in uh, uh, DSA and competitive programming. So if you uh, if you have an idea about mathematics, then only you can understand that algorithmic approach for fast exponentiation, and then only you can move forward. So I feel uh, so that uh, like that mathematics is involved there as well. What do you think? Yeah, true. But let's just uh, let's just understand this thing. If a person is not good with mathematics, okay, or someone from the arts background is trying to do competitive programming or DSA or he is not confident about it, what he can do according to you? Uh, according to me, uh, I'll say that uh, even when you start with DSA, even someone who is mathematical in nature, even if he or she starts with DSA. So the thing is Siddharth, that, uh, that uh, still you have to learn every day, right? You still learn new algorithms, you come across new uh, data structures and algorithms. So obviously you keep on learning. And for someone who is not into programming as well, you or someone who is in programming, both have to keep on learning. So even if you're not in uh, programming, at least you must be knowing addition, subtraction and basic mathematical operations. So you can start and you can learn things on the go. Start with time complexity, start with prime numbers, start with HCF, LCM, and then slowly and gradually you would level up. So with time, as you keep on uh, learning and translating your thought process and ideas into code, uh, one by one for every topic, then I guess even if you are from any background, commerce background or any background, if you keep a regular practice, then you would improve. Okay, so just to add to that, okay, I don't think it's a very famous suggestion or something. What happened was, when I started off, I my target was to get into TCS, Tata Consultancy Services. So there they have a maths round, okay, or I can say aptitude round, okay. So what I did was, I first focused on TCS or something. So first round was that aptitude round. And it really worked for me. What happened was I tried to solve all the previous aptitude round problems of TCS, which doesn't involve coding. And then when I completed that, and then I stepped into coding or DSA or CP, things became easier when I started off early without doing that aptitude thing. I don't. I think people who are very underconfident with mathematics, they can still do that, because Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, and most other services com service based companies still have this round. Uh, see, the thing is, uh, Siddharth, uh, that when you talk about somebody being from IIT hmm. or from uh, somebody from being a uh, from being in NIT or a Tier One college, what comes to your mind? that the person must be very bright, right? The person must be very sharp. So basically when it comes to programming, right? So programming is also just thinking, right? Mathematics is just a part of it, right? For example, in physics, mathematics is applied. So it's not like in programming, you have to do everything from scratch or you need to understand very complex algorithm. That will not happen on the very first day, never. So that will happen gradually, let's say after 1.5 years or one years into DSA or programming, you will come across because in, even today, you can you will agree with me that even today we might come across some hard mathematical algorithms, right? Uh, so, or something uh, that is complex in nature in terms of mathematics. So uh, I'll say that uh, with practice, it uh, like uh, everyone learns with time how to, uh, how to solve in a mathematical format. What do you think, Siddharth? Yeah, even after being very good with DSA and I can say competitive programming. What happened to me was like six months or eight months before I came across a very small algorithm that was Gosper's hack. Okay. Earlier in my days, I just mugged it up, learned it by heart and moved forward. Then I take, took to my ego to understand it. 
So it is true, just, just adding a validation to your statement that yes, it is true. You would just keep learning just the basic of addition, subtraction, and the knowledge of simple mathematics is enough to move forward. Yes. Okay. So now let's just start noting up the topics, which would, which needs, which would be required in your journey. So prerequisite is already done as of now. Let's just start off with wh what all topics you would be coming across. Uh, so I guess initially in the very starting, you would be coming across prime numbers, right? Okay. Then HCF, LCM is one thing that you'll be coming across. Uh, when you go with HCF, LCM, then segmented C also comes into play, right? And then problems which are based on prime numbers, LCM and everything uh, in between around there. Those things will be you will be coming across. And if you'll go a little bit more advanced, then Euler Totient function is there. And a couple of other mathematical things are there that you will come across. So this, this is just the very basic that, that I think you... Uh, uh, we'll start with and uh, rest after that, uh, whatever uh, algorithm or whatever mathematical questions will come based on number theory that you will be able to tackle, I guess. That. Okay. So, yeah. Or also one more thing adding, uh, since you said, so it might happen that you might come across as we discussed initially in the starting that you might have to do some permutation or combination, right? So you might have to uh, apply some permutation combination concept to your problem, or maybe you might be required to solve some area or length breadth parameter problems, right? Uh, some geometrical problems in general. So those are some basic uh, requirements that are there when it comes to mathematics. Yeah. So if you talk about the basics, what do you mean by basics? The basics are knowing arrays, stack, queues, and then you would be learning about recursion. Okay. As you move forward to recursion and you learn dynamic programming, Okay, then the constraint would be large enough and you would be getting the statement that since the answer can be very large, compute it modulo 10 to the power 9 plus 7. So here comes the part where you need to learn about modular arithmetic. And learning modular arithmetic is a one hour task for an average person. But knowing the modular inverse would just take you, I think, around two hours because you need to understand about Fermat's little theorem and the extended equilibrium algorithm and all those. You but yes, to... uh, the prerequisite is that basic should be clear. Then you will, then you will eventually build upon those topics as well. No, we are just talking about the whole scenario. Yeah. Like if what all the, what are all the things or what are all the pit holes that you would be encountering where maths would be involved. For example, uh, another very basic algorithm that is pigeonhole principle, right? So you might come across pigeonhole principle problems. So that is uh, another very basic topic that you should know. For example, what is pigeonhole principle? So in pigeonhole uh, principle, let's say you have n boxes and uh, uh, you have, uh, let's say you have n uh, boxes, right? And you have n plus one number of pigeons. So uh, in that case, what will happen to that? In one pigeon, at, uh, at least more than one page, in one box, there would be more than one pigeon, right? So these things come under uh, pigeonhole principle and the can obviously an old principle statement as well but uh, those basic things are there then the basic set theory can also be required okay so i think it's becoming very messy at this like we can't really see the comments so is there a way to hide his or something or put user in timeout what does this really happen yeah you can do that okay put user in timeout i think it's done Okay. Uh, okay. Fair enough. I think we are done. Okay. So, yeah. So at this point, when we move forward and then we learn about modular inverse, then is the, when is the next point you would be getting a mathematics heavy implementation? Uh, so see, uh, I won't recommend uh, going into, if suppose you're starting with programming, assuming DSA or competitive uh, competitive programming. So I, I suggest always that whatever topic you are in, right? Let it be arrays, linked list, or any topic or be it mathematics. Always do the easy and the medium question of every topic first, and then move to the hard question of every topic. Okay. First cover the easy and medium of every topic. Mm -hmm. First come to arrays, cover the easy and medium, come to number theory, cover the easy and medium, 
come to strings, cover the easy and medium, come to DP, cover the easy and medium. Why? Because when it comes to the harder problems of number theory, so it is not necessary that a hard topic of number theory would be required. Maybe you might need some data structure. Maybe you yeah. might need something else. I agree right? to this. So that is why uh, when it comes to harder problems of number theory, so the main thing is that you should be uh, proficient enough in other data structures and algorithms. Uh, basically, your level till medium level or easy level should be clear enough so that you can tackle the harder level number theory questions. They might not be hard because they are asking a hard number theory concept there. They might be hard because they are using several other data structures or algorithms to solve that problem. Yep. Because a hard majority of the time, a hard problem comprises of multiple data structures and algorithms. Majority of the times. not uh, It doesn't only rely on a single algorithm. Like, fair enough. So, moving forward. Uh, yeah, moving forward, uh, I would like to add one more thing. Suppose that if I am someone uh, who doesn't know mathematics even, okay, then also there are certain problems which can help me get started and uh, give me confidence. For example, you know about logical reasoning. Initially, you talk about, uh, talked about TCS exam and logical reasoning. So, one thing, one topic that is there, that is number uh, game theory, right? So game theory is what? Like uh, a player will lose or win, right? Uh, let's say there are two players playing. Mm -hmm. So a player will win or lose. So that is logical reasoning. Sometimes you might have to apply some number theory to it or some basic logic to it, right? Yep. So those are also problems that you can get started with number theory problem, uh, num uh, game theory problems as well, because they require a little bit of uh, that mathematical or logical uh, thought process uh, into them. Yep, I think game theory mentions the usage of both the players would play optimally or player Alexa or those would play optimally. And mo I think majority of the game theory is dependent on mathematics. Yeah. And game theory is not that much asked in a interview, whatever I have observed. Uh, it can be asked like there are problems like jump game and others. Where... Majority of the times. I'm just talking minority. It appears. Yeah. But majority of the times it doesn't really appear. Like the NIM games and all NIM games and all are little bit relevant in the market. But still I haven't really seen a problem which requires the heavy use. Yeah. One more uh, point that I would like to add here uh, is that uh, like you must have heard about Pascal's triangle, right? It's a very popular problem when it comes to arrays. So in arrays on GFG also, you can find Pascal's triangle problem under the easy or the medium level category, right? So that problem can be done in basic manner also. That problem can also be done using binomial coefficient approach. Okay. So binomial coefficient is also one of the basic mathematical things that you will come across and you will, when you come across Pascal triangle, then if you will see a Pascal triangle problem, or obviously let's say if you'll not understand. So suppose that when I was there, I, I'm talking about myself. So what I did was I came across this Pascal triangle problem. Normally I was able to do it, but how to do it more optimally. So then I went through this GFG article and I uh, got to know that, okay, there is this thing, binomial coefficient, which accidentally I al already knew because I was from mathematical background. So then I saw that, okay, it is applying this uh, binomial coefficient approach. And that is how it is getting the uh, nth number generated for the Pascal triangle or nth row generated for the Pascal triangle. So these things, suppose if somebody doesn't know binomial theorem, so you will come across binomial theorem when you're solving even basic Pascal triangle, which might look like an array problem, but actually it is binomial theorem. Yep. Fair enough. So I think we have a decent amount of time. And let's at this point, let's talk about which platform requires how much mathematics to solve. Because at this point, when people are exposed readily to the internet, they would go to platforms like Lead Code, Geeks for Geeks, Code Forces, At Code. These are the primary platforms. And which platform requires more usage of mathematics to solve problems? Yeah. And which platform requires less usage of So let's frame it down into uh, two platforms only. Let's say geeks for geeks and code forces okay because geeks for geeks you can say for dsa right and code forces for doing hard code competitive uh competitive programming although geeks for geeks on, on geeks for geeks as well i've seen that lately they have also added a lot of hard competitive programming mm -hmm. problems but uh what happens is uh, when it comes to geeks for geeks right so in geeks for geeks you uh if you start uh solving normal problems so there's not much uh mathematical uh 
level required or mathematical prerequisites required. So on Geeks, so Geeks, I can say that you can learn things on the go. Uh, when it comes to code forces, uh, so if you have to improve in code forces, so you should go to code forces and you should select the mathematics tag. For example, on GFG as well, we have tag that is mathematics, uh, divide and conquer by search. So on code forces, you should go and select the tag uh, num uh, number theory or maths. Okay, when you will select that tag. Constructive is also good. Uh, but that is a different domain, right? Uh, that might require you to write a code, uh, which is not mathematical in nature. So uh, yeah, uh, yeah, being on the point only, uh, if you will focus on game theory and number theory, uh, number theory or math tagged problems on code forces, then you can start solving from 800 rating till 1100 rating. And that's how your basic mathematical approach would be built. Yeah. So I gave some decent amount of contest over at coded too. And I can vouch for that till today. The usage of or the problems which requires mathematics are maximum in at coder. Like the population of the problems which are at max is on at coder. Like at most of the problems, I can say that they, I'm talking about that coder beginner contest. Like the first three or four contest on five out of three, uh, five, three out of five, they would require mathematics. Uh, and Talking about code forces, I can say around 20% would require the usage of hardcore mathematics. Uh, see, uh, the thing is, it depends on platform to platform. At Coder is a Japanese platform, so maybe they have a different philosophy. But uh, in general, yesterday I was taking the uh, GFG CP hybrid course live session. Okay. okay. So we came across a problem, right? So I'll, uh, I'll not explain that problem, but let's say if I'll give you a general scenario, okay, that in a party, Let's say there are n people in a party. Okay, this is a very basic question. Suppose that there are n people, right? Now, like what you have to do is you have to make sure that every person in the party uh, shakes hands with every other person, right? Mm -hmm. So in this case, what you will do? You will say that if a particular person is there, then he, he has to shake hands with n minus one other people, right? Mm -hmm. One person will have to shake hands with n minus one other people. So n people will have to shake hands with n into n minus one other people. Mm. Correct to that. Mm. But in this process, what has happened? I have counted that I have shaked, uh, I have shaken hands with you and you have shaken hands with me. So I've counted twice. Yeah. That is why I need to divide it by two. So it would be n into n minus one divide by two because I counted it two times. Yeah. So these basic things you will come across on Geeks of Geeks and Code Forces at Coder platform. So uh, I guess these things require more basic logical things uh, and it is not that mathematical right because it is just normal unitary method that we used to learn if if somebody does this much work in this many days so how much work can be done is this this many days so just like shaking hands problem everybody has to shake hands with everyone else so if i am shaking hands with you so that's just one time that's just one transaction so that should be counted as one transaction not two so in general what i will say i'll say that one guy will shake hands with all the n minus one other guys so n guys will shake hands with n into n minus one. Okay. But uh, as I said, th there's a duplicacy, right? Because I'm counting uh, undirectedly. I'm counting bi-directionally. I'm counting from me to you as well as from you to me. But I should count only one time. So that would be n into n minus one by two. So that is why I'm saying that when it comes to mathematics, it's more logical and you have to be patient enough to think uh, normally, even if you're not understanding, go through the edit editorial and then you will understand the things. Okay, and pe if people understand this uh, handshake problem and uh, the discussion so far, they can hit the like button as well as they can give us a plus one for acknowledgement. Okay, because I can see a lot of people are uh, looking at this stream. Okay, so I think at this point we can just read out the comments. Okay, so is MCA worth doing? So we would just take up take up the comments for the next three minutes, I suppose. Okay. So. Is online MCA worth doing? What do you think? Uh, I think uh, if it is online, then you can do it. You will have a lot of time. So I prefer remote jobs even. So I prefer remote jobs. So any day I'll prefer remote studies. So why do you prefer remote jobs? I prefer remote jobs because of flexibility purpose, right? So it gives me a lot of uh, independent. It saves time, uh, saves traveling time. And I don't like to get ready for office. <laughs> okay, so where you would be investing your time apart from the, uh, the time you're saving up? Let's say you are saving three hours a day on commute as well as doing all those. So where would you? Uh, I, I as of now I would uh, spend it uh, physically em uh, empowering myself or uh, like going to gym or doing some physical work because uh, we spend a lot of time on screen. Uh, if you'll see my screen time, 
maybe I spent 12 to 13 hours total, including my laptop and mobile. So uh, that's why I would like to be uh, physically present and I would like to go to gym if if that time is safe. Okay, fair enough. So I'm not, yeah, if we are optimizing. <laughs> but as of now, you know, we don't have that option. Yep. So as of now, you are working seven days a week. So I don't think you have a bandwidth to do that. Sir, what if I don't want to do competitive programming? Should we be ready, ready for job and get experience? So as of now in the current scenario, market scenario, how much is competitive programming relevant in the industry? What do you think? Uh, see, I met uh, uh, on Sunday, I met a very uh, popular mentor, uh, a po very popular, uh, you would say, you can say personality, personality right? On Sunday, I met a very personal, uh, very famous personality who was very famous for competitive programming. Right. So, uh, and he is still is today. Right. So uh, he told me that he wants to, he feels like he should start competitive programming again. Okay. okay. And even I have met a few other people who always say that they always want to start with competitive programming or they want to be in the process of solving problems. Right. So I guess uh, uh, that uh, there is no end. There is no limit. It depends on growth. Like, if you talk about three or four years back, then competitive programming opened up gates to many great companies. But as of now, doing just competitive programming doesn't really open gates, okay? Because competitive programmers do have a different mindset. If you talk about the highest rated person on code forces or most of the rankers on code forces, they aren't really doing a tech job most of the time. Because it is just like playing chess. It's a, I can just relate it with playing chess. Like it's a mental exercise that you are doing at this point. And it does, at this point, at this market scenario, doing DSA is enough. And adding competitive programming just strengthens up the DSA. But competitive programming is just an icing on the cake. It's not absolutely necessary. Or I can say it's an optional at this point. Uh, I would say if you solve problems on Geeks or Geeks, right? Uh, DSA problems on Geeks or Geeks. So they have added a lot of problems uh, which are DSA based but have a competitive program programming touch as well. So that much would be fine. Yeah. Yep. So I don't think doing the competitive programming alone is required. I don't think so. So, so what should we do? Uh, how to make uh, how to make projects as beginner without copying anyone's code so as a beginner as a beginner you can't really make projects without copying codes as a developer like if you talk about the development section because the so-called implementation way of implementation, the optimized way of implementation or something else like what I can say, like you learned about let's say Django and then you saw that class-based implementation can be done. Like there are two ways to check the parameters. The very first one is by using an if statement and then you see someone else doing assert. So taking inspiration from someone else code is the correct term or the correct thing you should do without copying, without copying or not looking is not a solution. You should take inspiration and inculcate the good habits from them. Like I can say my way of implementing DSA problem was inspired by Neil of code forces. You, you used to look at anyone else's implementation back in days? Uh, I used to look at Ashish Gupta's implementation. I, I used to look at a lot of Indian red coders implementation uh, just to see how fast they have written or just to see what algorithm they are using. Yeah, like what are the tricks they are using Yeah, to implement past or what are the small things, what they do have the define. See, when it comes to programming, so you cannot say that you cannot, uh, you will never look at the code and you'll start development. No, it's not even DSA. So not development even is far away from that. Okay. Yeah. Like when it comes to DSA also, you have to see the algorithm. You have to see the code. Then only you will be able to write it. Obviously, later on when you get experience in DSA, you are able to write. But firstly, you see few codes. You see how string is made, how you do the basic operations. Right. So everything initially you have to look at. So when you uh, 
you can make st uh, small projects. Once you have done that, then you can make projects uh, without looking at them. But initially, you should make projects. See, the thing is that when it comes to normal programming, uh, that is DSA program based programming, we all do a lot of revision. We solve the problem a couple of times. But when you are making a certain project, why don't uh, why don't you make it two or three times? If you make it two or three times, you get more proficient at it. When you solve a problem two or three times, normally what happens? You get better at it. You understand something much more in it. Your clarity gets better. So at the same time, when you are doing development of smaller projects, why not make it one or two or three times, even if you are copying it or not copying it? Okay, if you make it two or three times, then it, it will bring more clarity in your mind with respect to the concept. You'll, you'll get more... Uh, like uh, you'll get more sharper when it comes to writing code, writing clean code and writing faster code, as well as writing efficient, uh, like uh, in efficient ways, writing the code. So uh, I'll say that it comes with practice. And uh, initially, you what, whatever projects you're making, small, even small ones, you should, uh, you should always make them a couple of times uh, and then move to the next project so that you are uh, very much uh, hands on with coding. Okay, so let's just mention the last mathematic top mathematical topic that is needed in DSA or competitive programming. I think the last mathematical topic that we forgot to add is the probability. Uh, prob uh, probability, right? Yes. Uh, basically, it's is, is very seen in competitive programming, but very, like I can say, it's on minority in DSA. Uh, see, it's uh, even it is my in minority in DP also. In DP, you have uh, DP mathematics, right? So in DP mathematics, there is... Uh, uh, probability DP as well, right? Uh, you might have come across this problem, night probability, right? There's a problem you can search, night probability GFG practice. So then you will get the probability of the night being in this uh, place or that place. So those are some of the places where you might get probability, but it's just like uh, total, uh, like uh, the current uh, value divided by the total uh, number. Like that's what probability is all about, right? So it is not that difficult probability. I would say normally it's not that difficult. Okay. So I think we are done with this stream, but let's just uh, let's just answer. This. Uh, I, I guess you can ignore this, uh, Siddharth. Okay, he oh. can put it in time out. Okay, I think he's coming from different different accounts. Like, mm. oh. uh, so if uh, all of who, you who are watching, if you have watched this uh, stream till this point, you can give us a plus one in the chat, and if there are any questions. So we are open for your questions as well. So please uh, mention your questions. Okay, we are ready for a QA. and a So you can ask your questions regarding mathematics, especially in CP or anything that you are stuck with related to mathematics in programming. And we will be uh, definitely answering those questions. Okay, so I have seen this person, I think on LinkedIn too, like Srivali Chalsani. I think she is a person who has started off recently. Like there was a post on game i don't think just yeah i think you can confirm i have seen this person's profile on linkedin oh yeah i think she's she's the one so how should the eight great students start with programming after knowing the basic math so before that uh, before that i'll tell you one incident right yesterday i was uh, i was teaching uh, gfg cp hybrid uh, cp uh, cp batch right live batch and i came across a student uh, i was i i always ask uh, whether you are working or you are in college so he mentioned 11 standard so i asked him why you enrolled so he said that uh, he wants to prepare i guess for iui that is uh, uh, Olympiads, uh, like coding Olympiad for uh, college going students, right? Z O I U I, basically zonal, yeah, yeah. zonal uh, uh, Olympiad for zonal coding Olympiad. So uh, she's from eighth class as well. So I guess uh, students who are in uh, uh, school, they have also started uh, taking interest in programming and that too from mathematical background. So that's a like, great thing. It's not a new trend, I can say. Back in my days, two years before, when I was associated with an academy, there was my co worker. With, named as Adish. Okay, he was my co worker and he was in his 11th standard. No, he was, I think, on 9th or 10th at that point. And he is also preparing for IUI. Okay, so now this person, how I think if you want to be good with, I think you're good with tech, I think you should just make it big with preparation of IUI. At this point, when you don't have a job to crack, when you don't have something to accomplish, you can try out competitive programming at its peak. Like you can devo devote your time to its fullest. You would just enjoy it also at this point. 
you would enjoy it do it as, as much as you can i think so like you're doing competitive programming for around six years when you would be like when you would be getting in college you would be having five or six years of competitive programming experience but i think uh, she's asking how to get started so i'll say that there are two ways right uh, firstly uh, you can go to geeks or geeks like what you have to search is uh, like that is how i did okay so what you should do is you should search uh, important topics for competitive programming mathematics right then a geeks for geeks you would come across a geeks for geeks article go through those articles uh, initially you will be solving prime numbers then uh, i guess hcf lcm and all those things uh, just read those articles prime sieve segmented sieve and all those things okay once you are ready with those things then you can solve those problems that are given on geeks for geeks as well okay in any language then after that as i said like what you can do is you can uh, open your account on code forces okay uh, if you are in state it's standard also go to code forces make your account there and there you can sign up and you can so start solving the problems that are rated 800 and that have the tag as math there and that's how you can yeah, uh, get I better did. yeah i too did so and then as you move forward whatever your rating is plus 100 or plus 200 is the problems that you should be solving what do you think uh, but yes yeah, since is uh, since she's just going to start so i'll say that she can just get started that would be uh, that would be the first stepping stone for her yeah so all the best to you more powers to you so i think we are good enough till this point so this was from our side if you're watching the stream in the recorded version or if you were here till this point like and comment your views on like your comment your views so that the reach of this video could be increased uh, also at the same time siddharth can you tell us what is uh, commit with gfg <laughs> so commit with gfg is nothing but a third 90 days uh, 90, 390 challenge 390 days challenge uh, 390 challenge like a person is person purchases a course and then if he is able he or she is able to if he or she is able to if that person is able to complete the course at least 90 percent then he would be getting a refund of 90 percent yep i'm i'm not very sure about that but i think you can confirm you have yeah i guess i heard something like that so you can explore that i guess the link is given in the chat yeah at this point of time me and yash are busy with our lives <laughs> okay fair enough so that was it from our side this is me sadat hazra and, and this is me yash signing off thank you everyone